Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Um, figured I would do a chit-chat get ready with me. Um, starting out with, well, clean skin. I have moisturized, prepped. Um, I've got the stuff over here that I use every day. I figured I would just show you instead of like going through the whole bit. Um, I start out with using my Origins Plant Scription anti-aging power serum um, I, know, I think I would learn how to do this by now but anyway it only takes just a itty bitty teeny tiny little bit on I usually use my middle finger um, and then dot under my eye and then just kind of rub it around uh, one dot for each eye I used to have a really 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 deep um, wrinkle like right or right along here. You can still kind of see it, but it's not nearly as bad as what it was. Um, this stuff is fairly expensive, but I've been using this one, which is a 1.7 fluid ounce um, container of this stuff um, for, I think, over a year now, because it takes such a teeny tiny little bit and I'm not even halfway through it, so I think it's worth it, and I never ever want to be without it, but that's always the first step. Second step that I do is my under eye um, moisturizer, which if it would focus, that would be awesome. Is it going to do it? And of course, with it being white, it's not that greatest, but anyway, it's the Lumine Lumine Velo Light Bright Eyes All-in-One Eye Treatment. I use this in the morning. I use a, um, I use a different one at night. We can do that one another day. Um, and it, also for the daytime right now, I use the, by the same brand, the daytime moisturizer. That says day morning because it, it has some SPF in it. I swear it feels like I've got like little e little hairs all over my face. Um, then for um, sunscreen. Right now I'm using the Cetaphil Oil Control Moisturizer. So I put that on top um, of all of that. Uh, today's primer um, is the Professional. Um, I actually haven't even opened up this tube yet. I'm using a itty bitty little one because uh, I have several samples, sample sizes and I'd rather clear up space, get through those first. Anyway, but I primed all over my face with that. Um, and I'm using the Smashbox. Um, it's like Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. I've got it in one of these little tube thingy, or the, like you use for toothpaste. <laughs> because um, also this is just a little teeny tiny little bit. About the same size that I use of the Origins. But I'm nearing the end of the tube, obviously and it's really difficult um, like my hand strength is kind of going here in my later years um, and I thought you know hey I'm gonna try one of these things I got this at the um, I call it the Japanese store it's like Daiso Japan everything's either like a buck fifty or at max three dollars um, it would be nice if I could find one just like this but smaller because it takes up quite a little bit in that tiny drawer in my vanity um, but then it makes it a lot easier to dispense Anyway, so that under eyes, because I do have very wrinkly, crepey under eyes from the um, aforementioned in my last, and did I mention the last video? Okay. I rub my eyes a lot, and I know I shouldn't, but it feels good, so, you know, when you're tired, what are you going to do? Um, and then for the lids, the Smashbox, um, I think this is also Photo Focus, although which would be not, or Photo Finish, um, primer for the eyelids. Again, it just takes a teeny tiny little bit. So that's my priming steps. Today should be fairly interesting. I had purchased the entire Jaclyn Hill X Morphe brush sets of both face and eyes. Um, I've got them all sitting over here, either like these little guys. I've got off in a thing because the rest of them just don't fit in my um, little container that I've got. But I've got the rest of them all sitting up, so they're kind of easy for me to... Oh, that focused in really nice. 
easy for me to see what I've got and choose. Um, I do have a few of my can't live without brushes here for my eyes because I do have, as you can tell, very small eyes. And while she does have quite the selection here, um, she doesn't have anything in here quite the size of these, quite the size or style of these little things that I have to have. So with that being said, uh, the foundation is now next. Um, actually, I guess before I get into that, I should probably point out all my trouble areas. Um, let me see, I'm gonna grab my little thing here, zoom in so that you can see. Hopefully not cut off my head too, ba too badly. Um, but I've got large pores, um, the broken capillaries around the nose, um, I have texture on my chin, like right in the middle here, which is weird. Really weird. Still feels like I have a hair on my face over there. Kind of driving me nuts. Um, sparse eyebrows. I used to not pluck my eyebrows, so I luckily uh, didn't do the over plucking like a lot of women my age did back in the 90s. So I'm quite grateful for that. Uh, that I kind of skipped out on that. I used to think that I had like amazing eyelashes because my eyelashes went all the way up to my eyebrows. Um, no, 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 no. My eyebrows weren't, or my eyelashes were not that amazing. It's just that I had, you know, as I refer to them, Chewbacca brows that went like all the way down here. So I do constantly have to pluck every night in here and then, you know, on weekends or whatever, I'll get like some extra hairs over here and some in the middle. I've never really had a unibrow. Again, thank you, but anyway. Um, I've got these spots all over my face. Um, not the freckle, I kind of like the freckle. Um, but like you can see the really big one right there. Um, but they're all over and I know that what they are is just horrendously clogged pores. Um, that it happens just very, very quickly. Um, sometimes I can catch them and get the whatever that gunk is out fast and a lot of times not. Um, discoloration, redness, especially like here in the T-zone. This is typically where I break out is here and here, here and there. Um, luckily I don't have any bad breakouts right now, but this is just, you can see all my skin as it is. All right, and then now let's um, zoom this thing back out again because people don't need to be that close. Um, let's see, so foundation. So today what I'm going to use for both foundation and concealer, because I do like to use, um, if possible, the same the same brand um, each, you know, because I guess, I don't know, something in the back of my mind is like, oh, it'll work better that way. It'll meld better, meld together better. Um, so today I'm going to be using my Bare Minerals Bare Pro Performance Wear Liquid Foundation um, in the shade Aspen. So there's that. Come on. There's that one. Uh, and then for the concealer, I am using the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. Does it say what the shade is? light just light so this is what this looks like there we go that worked fairly well um, and for the sponges I am using my Juno and company this is my current one I love this thing um, and then this is a real techniques small little sponge that I use this for under the eye and we're doing a little bit of setting so, foundation first. I grab a little bit on my finger. Okay, it's kind of liquidy. I don't know if you can see this or not. I've got lots of focus. It's running everywhere. So, let's just get it dotted on the face. And hopefully, 
this all comes through okay. Well, I've got it like dripped under my fingernails. I hate it when that happens. I keep a towel on my lap because I make a gigantic mess of myself. And I'd rather not get it all over my clothes. So I'm looking a little insane right now, but that's fine. Actually, I'm gonna need just a, oop, that's a little too much, but you know, I've left this sitting for a long time because, you know, it's expensive and I'm like, oh, well, I want to save this for special occasions. Well, about my only special occasion on a regular basis is going out to dinner once a month with one of my daughters, her husband, and their two kids. Um, and Honestly, once a month isn't nearly enough. Life is short. I've been thinking lately, you know what? Just exactly that. Life is short. Use the good silverware. Use your, oh, that looks crazy. Um, use the good silverware. Use your good foundation. Use your good stuff. You know, back to thinking about my grandmother who had this nice china set teapot that she never used because she was saving it for something special. And when she passed away, it was still brand new in the box. She'd never used it because she'd never found, came across anything that was, in her opinion, special enough to use it. And I remember thinking, as you know, because I was 12, almost 13, when she passed away. And I was like, you know what? That's really sad. You know, she bought it. She never got to enjoy it. You know, we're not promised how many days we're gonna have on this planet. Literally, life is short. Enjoy the time you have here. If you, if you buy something nice, use it. Don't just you know, sock it away and save it for some time because especially with foundation, makeup, whatever, it's gonna expire. And then you've just wasted your money. So, you know, don't don't do that. Have fun with your life. You know. Anyway. Just kind of my PSA for the day. Um, I think I think I've got that blended in fairly well. Most of the discoloration is gone for the most part. I didn't use like a whole ton of it. Oh, my nose is running. I hate that. That's kind of a weird side effect of bariatric surgery, which I had, oh, about three and a half years ago. A little better than three and a half years ago best decision ever for me. Anyway, okay, so the next is the concealer of which, uh, I should probably turn on the little light here. Um, actually, my chin got covered up fairly well this time. So usually I'll dot some on my chin if I need a little bit more coverage there. Actually, yeah. Do you like one dot in the middle there? I always need more help around the nose with the broken capillaries and usually a stripe there in the center and then I've got a whole under eye situation which as you can tell I've got horrendous bags under my eyes and I have had since I was a small child I don't know why it's just genetic it sucks but it is what it is I have yet to find a single concealer or corrector that completely cancels out those under eye bags. Um, correctors, as a matter of fact, don't seem to work on my skin at all. Hopefully I'm not the only weird one like that. Um, if you have that problem as well, please tell me in the comments below. Please let me know I'm not alone. Um, Sorry if I kind of get out of frame here because I've got to 
Gotta see what I'm doing. Um, but other than all under the eye, and then this is probably not the thing to do, but I do it anyway, because I want to cancel out the color on my eyelids as well. So, bring that all over my eyelid. And here we go on the other side. I've also found not one concealer who claims to be creaseless is ever actually truly creaseless. At least not, not on mature eyes. It just doesn't happen. I have to work quite quickly on this part. Um, so there's the first layer. I actually did a pretty decent job of getting that stuff covered up, but I usually give it just a little bit more on the darker parts. I don't know if you can hear like the doors rattling or whatnot, but my husband and youngest son are working on fixing the car today that he wrecked a couple weeks ago. Um, so they're kind of in and out of the garage and the door slams because they don't catch it and it just kind of rattles the house. Um, so if you can hear that, I apologize. You can hear my fan going that's clipped to my monitor. I apologize, uh, but I definitely need to have the fan going because the hot flashes are real today. Okay, that's probably about as good as this is gonna get right now. So now we need to set really quickly. I put my Cody Airspun in a little tray that I also got at Daiso Japan. I believe it's probably actually supposed to be for dipping sauces. Uh, once I have it empty, I will pick it up and show it to you. Um, I put the powder on too soon because this side's already creasing. And then I'll show you what I do at the end of getting all of this stuff on. And I do a little trick with a tiny little Q-tip. Also, ironically enough, from Daiso Japan, the little I've never found them anywhere else, and nothing like a little dollar store find. Okay. Alright, so I got that done there. I usually try setting around my nose, because it's going to break apart anyway, but, you know, it's a little bit heavier powder than you would normally use. Here, and I'm going to grab, what is this? This is the JH, the lighting sucks, JH01. Nice, big, fluffy powder brush. Okay, and typically also it happens, and I think you can see too. So I hadn't set my foundation yet, and I have a couple very deep lines, like right here and right here, because I have what is commonly referred to in this day and age as RBF, and I have had it since I was very young. Um, there was a lot of misunderstandings where people thought that I was, you know, angry or upset. And it's like, nope, it's just my face. It's just my face. I have no control over it. Um, but I'm going to zoom in here again a little bit. And you can see pretty deep. Because of how I have always combated the whole RBF um, is raising my eyebrows, which opens my eyes opens my face up and then maybe doesn't look like I'm I'm ready to you know kill somebody because you know that's not really my personality I'm pretty chill pretty laid back you know but the creases are there and the creases will remain to be there for the rest of my life because I ain't getting needles stuck in my face Botox mm -mm. no 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 because really easy to take your sponge again go over it because what they say is true don't ever set a crease um and i just kind of buff those back out just like a little smile laugh lines over here uh, a little bit stick that back in its holder anyway so then i'll take a nice big fluffy brush like this um i have a different morphe one over there that i use knock off a little excess and i literally just use it like a powder puff that's actually pretty soft. The other one that I have, which is, like I said, also a Morphe one, is uh, 
a lot denser than this one, but this will do the job. Anyway, I started putting my setting powder in this little dish because using the lid of it, of the, of the powder jar thing for the Cody Airspun, um, it is cracked, like all the way across, because I don't know if I'm being too rough on it, but then the, the um, container of the powder itself is also cracked, and I don't know how that happened. I don't know what happened, but I figured, you know, I could get these cute little dishes as you can buy. And these are nice little ceramic dishes. I got two in case I broke one, but now I just put the powder in the dish and then I'm all set from there. Okay, so after I set my powder, then I go and I'll grab um, my bronzer um bronzer blush highlight is the next so today because i didn't want to have to drag everything from over there i don't know if you can i don't know how to make it focus but this is that over there is my vanity where i normally do my makeup drug everything that i'm going to use over to this side of the room and i have to put everything all back later uh, but today for blush and bronzer i figured it would be easier just to grab a palette so i'm using the benefit blush bar um, and open it up. Whoop, I forgot I had that in there. So it comes with this little thing here for powder which as you can see from the plastic never actually used it but you get their um, hula bronzer and then you get and, and that's the regular that's not the hula light uh, which I have because I thought you know hey you know I'm pretty pale but actually it's too light for me. And so you have the hula bronzer and then you've got Rocketeer, uh, Dandelion, Gold Rush, and then California. Um, probably just going to be using Dandelion today because I've got a pretty, pretty blingy highlighter I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Ofra Highlighter of All the Lights. Highlighter All of the Lights. Whatever, but it is it's bright. So, um, like you saw in my... Uh, BoxyCharm unboxing stuff in my last video. Um, I used that uh, Aesthetica brush for bronzing, but I figure I'm going to use today the JH, what is this? Uh, 02. Well, hey, I'm there. From all one, 02. I figure, you know what, this is, this is close. So I'm going to grab some of the bronzer, tap off the excess, and then I typically start up around here. And then I'll go jawline next. And damn cheekbones. And I typically kind of whoosh it up on the side. I've got another little brush over here that's probably actually supposed to be used for contouring. But I think I'm actually going to try for the first time today on my nose, usually I'll use just the tip of the Aesthetica brush and kind of hit on down on the sides of the nose and call her good. Um, yeah, maybe I'll try that for another day. Let's stick to, so, do 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 do, a little cross there and then underneath here again. Uh, I'll throw that over there. Okay, and then for, goodness, let's see. For blush, I'm gonna use the JH04. It's kind of an angled. It's all right. So, I'm gonna go dandelion. Let's see how this, and usually I will just kind of stand on it and pick up as much as what I would like for it to. Or maybe I tapped off too much, but I'll just kind of stamp it I don't want to go ham because again I'm a grandmother. Maybe I need to sit up a little bit more. Or maybe, hmm. maybe I'm tapping off too much. Usually it seems a lot more pigmented. Could be me. I don't typically start on the apple of my cheek and I never smile when I do this because like I say you smile everything comes up up here and then if you put it away over here and then it drops way down. So I want to just along the 
top of my cheekbone almost where I actually do um, the highlight which is next that's probably good enough and stick that in there so that's it for that one today and then the ooh, I should probably fix it. okay and so for the Ofra uh, this is what this looks like can we get it to so it's got all the different colors inside there and let me tell you this one is this one's bright shiny and bright so the brush that i'm going to use for that is the jh07 this is the closest to i think i use one from their um yellow or gold it's like a y something um is what i normally use but this is close this is close and i'll grab kind of go like that grab a little bit of all of it tap off the excess and then and again, a little bit up the side, and on the other side, and then just a quick little boop, and a boop, and a boop. That's good. So, now what I like to do, I don't have that one with me, so I'll just do that. So I have, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Uh, but there is a thing called Beauty Pie, and this is their One Powder Wonder. And um, what I like to do with this is take a more dense brush, like this one is the JH03, that looks like. Yeah, um, which this is close. I think Jaclyn Hill actually uses this as her foundation brush, you know, which is fine, you know, whatever. But I take it and I actually, because this is a pretty pretty hard pan here with the white, um, but I'll swirl that on there because if I do this a little harsh, then I like to take the One Powder Wonder and go over the top of all of this and just kind of buff it in. And that will then take care of if I put too much on. And Especially if you get like a really bright highlighter like this one, um, you don't end up looking like Bozo the Clown. Because I want a little bit more of a natural look. I'm not going for Instagram glam. I'm a grandmother for heaven's sakes. You know, I want to be pretty, but I don't want to be. Anyway, maybe it still kind of looks shiny. When I am, I'm totally mad. I'm sure it's all the lines, but you know, so the stuff is still there, it's blended in. Um, and then for my greasy side, I've never found any better powder than this, than the, the uh, Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot. Kind of, it's kind of classic um, beauty there, but it says super, super translucent mattifying powder. Now this one I do not swirl it in because this is a much, which as you can tell, I hit pan on it. Don't do that with like, I haven't done it with I think any other. Anyway, so I pat it in there and then I pat it on my chin. I learned the hard way in these areas not to sweep it on because for some reason my skin is not a fan in the middle of holding on to foundation okay and I'm back eyebrows are on as you can see and then uh, the next step is eyeshadow the Lorac Los Angeles uh, the shine bright pro eyeshadow palette um, this is not one that I showed you in one of my unbox in the unboxing that I did um, this is actually one that I purchased over the holidays this was part of what was on the floor um, by my nightstand, kind of crawling up the side of the nightstand that I was calling Makeup Jenga because I had more stuff than I had room for. Um, which is another reason for use your good stuff. Because like me, I'm probably not going to go through it all. 
unless I start like washing my face off when I get home from work and you know filming stuff and showing you how things look when it first goes on but anyway so um, I have other Lorac palettes that I mean they're they're good you know I wasn't as impressed with them but I may need to go back and see that maybe now that my skills are getting a little bit better I might need to give them another shot but uh, this is what the it's kind of got one of those little um, card things on there to protect the shadows it comes with a little brush that I've not used um, but these are the shades or actually they are very very pretty I was very very impressed especially with the color fizz which let's see if I can do this um, let's see if I bend this back fizz right there is stunning it does not look all that you know fantastic and the palette but man on my eyes whew. and then vanilla over here that I used for my inner corner um, and uh, brow bone highlight also very pigmented um, kind of like to think I might use icicle today but let's just see I never know what I'm gonna do until I dive in and just start doing it um, which I learned recently that uh, Lorac is that it's either the founder or the founder's daughter or something it's carol backwards <laughs> i was like where the hell did i come up with his name oh it's carol backwards yeah i'm an idiot okay now this part should be interesting because like i said i don't have my normal brushes so let's see what we're gonna do because normally i'll put my kind of creasy transition color first um, oh and what I do I do clean off my brushes with this little this is a jcat beauty um, dry makeup brush cleaner you just um, as you can tell dirty you know you get done using the thing and then you just and then I stick it back in the um, container holder doohickey because I'll use it same brushes every day and then I just you know once a week go through and just clean everything my face sponges however since these get wet these are cleaned every night every night I do not stir it out with a dirty one because bleh, bacteria and as you can tell I do keep them in this little kind of egg shaped holder things that um, help them dry out you do not want to keep them wet I used to do that and then I noticed that mold was growing on them because so I was thinking oh this is you know I'll just keep them wet and I'll be fine I don't have to do this every morning and you yeah, know that was gross don't do that please don't do that have more respect for your skin than that and your skin will be much happier with you okay so let's see I am going to use I think um whoop, I better move this little guy out of my way before I break him I mean I'm glad I have a backup but let's not use him if we don't have to um, so I think today, actually I'm going to get rid of this little thing so I don't lose that brush, is today I'm going to use um, Primrose, which is kind of a, it's funny, this one is actually called Dusty Mauve, and, uh, but I'm going to use Primrose today for that kind of transition. And, I'm gonna just, I use the edge of my little can, tap it off, and let's see. Oh, these are stiffer bristles than what I'd expected them to be. But that may work out quite beautifully. Huh, okay. But, uh -huh. I don't know how well that's gonna work because I keep, let's see if I go up here for this. I've got a little hand mirror coming so I can hold it up here instead of bending over with my little light up mirror here but let's see how this wow I may need to put this in my daily rotation for this this is actually pretty good it's getting in the crease but yet still kind of above on that I don't know it's called like orbital socket anybody knows let me know. Uh, the whole biology thing. 
was a long time ago. Um, I'm assuming orbital socket would be the best description. I don't know what it is actually called, but I'll usually I'll take it in the crease and up above it a little bit. And with as small as my eyes are and this pointy tip on this thing, that's, that's actually quite impressive with that. Well, okay. Um, anyway, building up the color a little bit. Um, and I like to, I don't know why, but I put it on the outer corner as well. It's all going to end up covered up with the next couple of shades, so I don't know why I spend time doing that, but I do, so there's that. And I I mean, and it doesn't take all the color off, but at least then, you know, then I got no color on my skin, so that's pretty neat. Okay. So there's that guy. Um... The one that I use then for that kind of all over, or at least for two thirds of the lid color. This is gonna be, yeah, this will be okay. Um, I think for this one, I'm gonna use that aforementioned Dusty Mauve. See how that looks. It's actually kind of light, so it's going to end up mostly being covered up anyway so this is almost more of a transition shade as well again I don't know why I go through this step because most of it is no longer going to be visible once I finish getting everything on my eyes but um, I don't know if you see but I kind of blend as I go um, not necessarily out of choice, but more because of how the skin on my eyes moves. That if I don't, I will have kind of creasy, cracked looking. That sucks getting old. But at the same time, it is a privilege to get old. There are many people who do not and I am very grateful that I thus far am having the opportunity to grow old at all, um, but also to be able to do so fairly healthy, which is amazing. Um, so that didn't do quite as much as I thought it would. I think I'm gonna take the light shade or light brown shade. I do tend to use a lot of earth tones and I'm just going to cover that up because that did not quite do as much as I would like it to. I think that would be better as the transition shade that I normally or that I used it for the last time. I'm just going to go in with light brown over the top. Call it good. Man, I wish this mirror were brighter, but it's not. That's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Oh, it's got like a little fuzzy. Fuzzy wuzzy was a bear, right? Hmm. Okay. I'm actually quite impressed with these brushes so far. Um, I like the points on them. The fact that they're actually placing the shadows right where I want them and I can get right in the corners like that without getting all over the place. Huh. Should have given them, given them a shot earlier. I'm going to take this one. So I've got the thing squished off. Okay, um, then next I use a kind of little pencil brush because again, very small eyes. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Fizz again because I like Fizz. Pack that on there. This, so the shimmer shades, I do not tap off. Those I go straight in with because for some reason, my old eyes like to not hang on to shadow in the inner corner. Which is frustrating, to say the least. 
I could probably try wetting it. Um, but the reason why I don't is when I've tried, for some reason, this eye, it'll get crusty. And then it will flake off during the day. And then I've got like, for lack of a better phrase, bald patches <laughs> where there should be color. What the hell is up with that? <sighs> Didn't used to be a problem. Um, so I just tend to keep it simple. You know, it's not all that, um, you know, glam or whatever, but you know what? At least it's not like empty patches with no color, which is just weird. This is actually a little bit smaller than the pencil brush that I normally use for this. It's actually be pretty, really good for the inner corner highlight, but um, okay. So for eyeliner, um, I actually just use eyeshadow. And typically what I would do is put down my um, original transition shade first and then whatever I use in the outer corner to darken it up um, I'll also I'll put that over the top so first I use this itty bitty teeny tiny little Morphe brush um, doesn't even have a number on it it's just a tiny little bullet pencil brush thing and I think the primrose is going to be a little bit too light. It's going to make me look like I've got pink eye. So I'm actually going to think I'm going to take Dusty Mauve and I will just lightly. Oh, that's not even showing up. So, hmm. It's probably going to have to be the dark brown one. But I'll do the same on both sides, so just in case once I get out from behind these lights, I'm like, oh hey, look at that. Okay. So let's try this with the dark brown instead. This one I also do not tap off. I take it all the way up in here, kind of fill in spots that I've missed. Do this where I'm actually setting up a little bit better and you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, that might be a little better. See? Now you can actually see it. Um, I also look out with a, there's no need for me to set this either. It just stays all day, which is super cool. I'll put that one first. So take it up in here a little bit, kind of fill in spaces, which I don't seem to have as many empty spaces there. That's what I do. I did with the other brushes, so these are going to definitely make their way into my regular rotation. Way to go, Jacqueline. Um, I'm going to go in with that vanilla shade. Let's, and then this is the same little itty bitty little brush. And let's brighten up that inner corner. Ooh, got a little too much. Gosh darn it. It's kind of powdery, so you gotta be careful with this one. But ooh, is it nice. What I also like about these little brushes is with as small as my eyes are, I'm paying close attention, then I don't end up actually getting it in my eye instead of on my like, oof, yeah, that's a bit much over here. So I wonder if I can kind of scrape some of that off there. Because that was, that was a bit much. Okay, and then let's take just a little bit and do that brow bone. Okay, 
Now, let's go with, this is one of the um, Luxie Mini brushes that we got in BoxyCharm. This had to have been November because December was my first Boxy Lux and they were different um, Luxie brushes in that one. You saw that, if you watched it, that was in my last video, which was my first video. Um, but these little guys, I love how teeny tiny the, they are. Um, and they work absolutely beautifully for how small my eyes are. So I'm going to take what I did last time, which is actually the slate blue for the outer corner. And then, yes, that will also end up being drug along the lower lash line with a different brush that is actually meant for eyebrows, but I use it for um, eyeshadow as eyeliner. So I just kind of stamp, stamp that outer corner. Try to get it as even as possible. So I don't know if you can tell, but one eye is opens wider than the other eye. I like to think it gives my eye character. Okay, so and then here's the other little tiny, teeny, tiny little brush I was talking about. Should probably actually be for doing eyebrows, but I use it for eyeliner because I get that nice angle. And this I try to get like just on the edge of where like the skin meets like where the, the water line is actually i think what i'll do is i'll quit i'll quit filming for this section you guys know how to put on eyeliner i'm sure and i'm back so eyeliner obviously finished being put on um, i went ahead and did my mascara as well um, i'm using the last of my benefit roller lash um, it has nice little, if you haven't seen it, just, you know, curved wand there. Um, wasn't really quite sure how I felt about it at first. Constantly got it, like, all over the place. Had to use my little Q-tip. This is actually the same one that I used yesterday. So on one side you can kind of see it's dirty. And then the other side clean. Figure, why waste it? So after doing everything on my eyes, um, actually, while I'm waiting for the mascara to dry, the next thing that I do is my lipstick. I actually really, really, really enjoy the Makeup Forever lip liners. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's like I've got pigmentation loss around my lips especially there, um, and my lips are not asymmetrical, uh, uh, anyway, so what I've learned to do is outline first, I didn't do that for the longest time, uh, but I outline first, and I do have to actually keep my mouth fairly neutral, because, you know, if you do the weird stuff with your mouth, um, it changes the shape of it, and then when it goes back to resting, like this side is just like curved up in and it's like, it's not even. <sighs> the struggle is real. Um, so I think I'll use this color today, which is Boundless Berry. Probably should sharpen it fairly soon. But this is just like a standard pencil type. Um, but it's actually surprisingly easy to work with and it's not it's not too stiff it's not too soft um these are really good these are really good oh and i did also blend in the eyeshadow on the top you can see it's not quite as harsh there in the outer corner and to do that i use this thing uh, it's a royal and lang nickel actually shadow brush medium eye shader is what it says um upside down but you know whatever um i got this forever ago in a ipsy bag 
actually. And I love that thing. I just use it and I just, you know, kind of windshield wiper it on there and blend everything in so that it looks fairly seamless. And then you just get, you know, as it catches the light, it doesn't look too crazy. All right, cannot talk while I'm doing this part. So I might just pause the video again while I get on the lip liner and then I'll show you what that looks like and then put on the lipstick on camera. Okay, so lip liner's on. Look a little crazy, but anyway, it's really hard not to, as I'm putting it on, like push out my lip one way or the other to make it, you know, seem easier to put on. Gotta do it with my face completely neutral. So then at least it's their shape like lips. Okay, so we'll put that one away. Um, I've really been enjoying lately the Beauty Bakery. Um, one of these is just uh, Lip Whip, that's what it's called. And on this one I like to use uh, the Versailles. It's kind of a nice berry tone shade. These are super cute. Um, this is just, it's kind of got that um, I don't know. You can do it. Not my face. There we go. So triangular shaped. Um, it's got that little dip in the middle, or I think it's probably hollow in the middle so that it holds on to the product, comes to a nice point so that you can get the corners and get all over really well. Let's see if I can do this from up here and do it where you can see me. <laughs> Everybody should get if you don't already have something and something to exfoliate your lips with if you like to use something that dries down totally matte like this because it does tend to you know emphasize any dryness that you have to your lips uh, I'd gone over to my daughter's house with matte liquid lipstick on and she took one look at me and she's like how do your lips look so hydrated exfoliate the snot out of them first they were pretty good today so they didn't need to do that extra stuff all right so now the next step after you know putting all of the eyeshadow and everything on um i do tend to end up with more creases under my eyes so one of the last steps is just going in and cleaning that up nifty trick is again the aforementioned itty bitty little q-tip and I flip my mirror over to the 10 times scary magnification um, lean in real close and then I just take the little q-tip and just oh so lightly rub back and forth across where all of the lines and wrinkles are and that takes the um, extra um, product out up there and kind of smooths things out quite a bit. Um, awkward, but it's just kind of just wiggle it just a little bit. Um, and it doesn't matter whether it's you know high end like this stuff with the bare minerals, whether it's a drugstore literally every single concealer creases on me all of them so that's a neat trick I don't remember where who it was I learned this from I know it was a fellow mature youtuber I just can't remember which one because I've been doing this for a while now um, and it works out beautifully. And then usually then next, once I've got this done, and as you can see, I do still have the darkness from my wonderful bags. Still very much visible both sides. So I take my OG 
Bare Minerals Concealer in the shade Bisque. Um, it's also a little kind of correcting because it's it comes out um, looking very much a brown color, but then once you sweep it on, it's kind of kind of peachy, kind of pinky peachy toned. Um, I actually still have from my very first um, kit that I bought for Bare Minerals in 2008. But anyway, this is my Bare Minerals concealer brush that came in my original kit. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely my favorite concealer brush ever. But obviously, you know, you get to the end. I still would like to cover up some more. So you can't put a liquid on top of everything that I've powdered. So you use a powder and you set it. And I will just sweep it on here. Um, and it still does not completely erase, but it's better. Plus, then if my eyeshadow has gone down too far, I can clean it up with this. And I get right up to that powder or the um, lash line almost just not covering up, obviously, the stuff that I've used as a um, eyeliner, because that would defeat the entire purpose. Then I take what's left over, go around those wonderful broken capillaries around my nose, fills in any spot. Um, I have a little bit of a situation going on there. A couple little breakouts. Not too bad, but you know, you would think. Um, oh yeah, and then where I kind of goofed up a little there, just kind of cover that back up. And you have to do a little fix. And then. The last but not least is the setting spray. Everything is as good as it's going to get. And lately I've been using the Smashbox Photo Finish So Chill Coconut. It says primer water. Oh, there we go. I'll just hold it out. How's that? Now it's time to drench, drench the face. I think once I get to the bottom of this bottle, since it's got a nice sprayer on it, and it actually unscrews. I've got some other setting spray that obviously the sprayers are either really gross, which now you can see my face is absolutely soaking wet, but I've got a fan going. This will get better. Um, anyway, um, the, the, the nozzle like completely gunked up on me. Like I can't, I can't get anything out of it. And it's like, really? Really? Why? What's wrong with this? Might actually be the Flower Beauty, which was a really great setting spray and was a really, really great um, sprayer on it, but it clogged, like a really, like after one use. Anyway, um, so yeah, once I get through it, I'll probably just pour it into here and then use it from here once I get it, you know, cleaned out. All right, I'm gonna pause this again. I'm going to go do my hair and then I'll come back for the outro because, you know, all my hair stuff is in the bathroom. So, see you soon. Alright, and I'm back. So now hair is done. Got my little do bobby stuck on because this is, as I'm sure you can tell, not my real hair. That's, that's a clip on. I don't know. I don't any better way to phrase it. Um, curls didn't turn out as well as I would like, but, you know, hey, still looks decent. Um, this is the finished look. I chucked on some costume jewelry. Um, I did go and grab that other setting spray. And, yes, it is the Flower Seal the Deal Long Lasting Setting Spray. 
Um, yeah, I used it once. It was fantastic. I love this product. It's beautiful. Nothing. Nothing. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's full. Thought, well, maybe, maybe, maybe if I spin the thing. Nothing. Drew, if you ever watch this, I love you. I've loved you since we were children. I loved watching you grow up. You're a beautiful woman. Fix the nozzle on this thing. Please. Please. Okay. But that's it. All right. So I don't even remember if I said it, but this is the finished look. This is how I'll spend the rest of my evening. Thank you if you stuck with me through all of this. It's a very ch chatty, uh, trying to figure out how to explain stuff as I go along, stay in frame. Again, I'm learning. I'm doing the best that I can. Um, if you have any uh, constructive criticism for me, please let me know. Until next time, you guys have a wonderful day and live your best life. You know, use your, use your good stuff. Don't let it, don't let it go to waste. But yeah, until next time, have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you again soon.